having that mass integrated with the surface of the plate, there's no more oxygen there. Now, polymer does have oxygen throughout, and we'll talk about that in a second. But you've done a lot to eliminate the interference that, uh, that oxygen presents to the plate being polymer, polymerized. <clears throat> There's also in the round, so we talked about analog, we talked about digital, now there's in the round, I thought I'd mention it because in the round means that you now have a plate that's processed that's already round. It's, 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 it's a sleeve, it's a sleeve, but it's a continuous plate. It's been, the polymer has been incorporated out to the surface of that sleeve, and then through some method, like you know, they inflate the mass, they, and they end up when it's been processed, similarly to how a plate would be processed, you're left with a, uh, a continuous plate for applications where you cannot afford to have any gap in your compression. Or maybe you have long runs and you don't want to worry about plate lifting or something like that. Okay? It's exposing the round for continuous compression or demanding registration. There's no plate mounting with these things. You make them in the round, make them all correct, and they should be very, very, uh, there shouldn't be any crookedness this way. You can be out of register in a linear or horizontal fashion, but not skewed, because they're all being imaged with these sleeves in the round. But that's, that's a specialty thing. Similar pro, uh, pre, uh, concepts apply that we're going to discuss on, so we're not going to really mention in the round, per se. Now, the UV light for processing digital plates, uh, I mentioned before when we were talking about color and how a spectral densitometer maps the spectral curve of color, you have radiation, and visible light is a type of radiation. And then we have about 400 and about 700 nanometers, and we see that. Then somewhere on here, we have the type of UV light that we're interested in. Okay, we have the UV short, the UV long. So the UV A runs from about 320 to that 400 UVA, UVA. and UVC runs about what, 120 to uh, <laughs> oh there it is thank you 180 to 280 I get some good signal <laughs> all right. These two regions are of interest to us. They do, they perform two functions in the processing of a <clears throat> digital plate. The long, and, it, and you can think of it, the long waves penetrate more through the plate. So they will be used to, um, to do your, your exposure of the power. Then in the, towards the end of processing a, a flexible plate, we're interested in doing a final curing of residual polymer that may be on the surface of that plate or just give it a final light finish. And we'll use the, the shorter wavelength, the 180 to 280, to do a light finishing on top of that plate. Okay, so we have those two. Now, so that means that you have to monitor the intensity of your UV lamps because as the, the strength and the intensity of your UV lamps diminish, if you're exposed for the same period of time, leaving time as a constant, as, it, as radiation intensity diminishes, curing can diminish also. To correct that, well, you could go up in time, but we're keeping time as a constant. So as radiation, as your lights become older, wear out, you have less UV. Emitted. <clears throat> uh, so, at lamps, I've seen them last 600 to 1,000 hours, 600 hours probably. And you want to check them about every 100 hours, monthly or monthly, whichever comes first in your workflow. <clears throat> when you uh, when you go to check check the, how, how 
intense your lights are, you want to warm your lamps up first because uh, if you were to plot it, you would see that you know the, the, the radiation increases and then it levels up as the lamps warm up and they reach their operating temperature. So when you're doing a test with a UV radiometer, you want to warm up your lamps. How long to do that? You can find out. In adult time trials and no one really stabilize, right? So you put it in and you're seeing that it's climbing, 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 and stabilizing. So that took me three minutes. Okay, so now you've established that your warm up time is, that is three minutes. The intensity increases, the exposure times may need to increase if you're finding that to achieve your results. Uh, you may want to replace your bulbs, but there is a minimum point at which you want to replace them. So you're going to want to follow your bulb replacement guidelines for your manufacturer's instructions. But the long story is that. You want to measure your short stories, you want to measure your bulbs, and they do wear out. They go bad over time. Yeah. Now we talk about plate distortion. And when I die on my tombstone, they're going to say, Here lies Frank, he calculated plate distortion. Because I, I know I helped so many people with plate distortion. And so I, I endeavored. In trying to communicate to you the easiest, most intuitive way you can understand what distortion means. Okay? Now, <clears throat> distortion happens to be when, when you wrap a flexor plate around a cylinder, you've started flat. Now, <laughs> so you started flat. You have a distance here, let's call that A. You have a distance here, let's call that B. They're the same, okay? But now, if you put this surface against this cylinder and wrap it around that cylinder, B would have to be, would have, would, would, would be longer. It have to be longer. So what happens is the plate, as you wrap it around that cylinder, it actually fans out to accommodate that diameter, that outer diameter. Okay. Underneath the plate, the, the, the mylar, the polymer backing, does not distort. So we start from the backing up. So we've got, this, let's say this is the cylinder. Let's say that the backing is that right there. <clears throat> the only part of the plate that distorts is the polymer bone from there up. Okay? So having said that, distortion is the ratio of the diameter up to the bottom very interface of the, the polyester with the pulp where distortion begins. So we take the diameter up to everything that does not distort, and then we divide that by the total diameter, or what we call the print diameter. That relationship is distortion. You will have a number less than one because you're dividing <clears throat> the smaller diameter, the smaller diameter by the larger diameter, and you'll have something like 0 0.9753, 97%, 95%, 98%, 98 it depends on your cylinder diameter. And when I use cylinder, I also mean sleeve, but so that I don't have to say cylinder slash sleeve, for those of you who use print sleeves for your plates, when I say cylinder, I'm including sleeves, okay? So I like to express it as the ratio of the diameter of everything up to the photopolymer over the diameter of everything including the photopolymer. So is it? That, that relationship, that ratio is the, the calculates to be the distortion. <clears throat> if you understand that now, forget about K factors, which we're going to go into and all that. If you understand, if you lost your charts, if you lost everything, and you understand and appreciate that what's happening is this portion here is distorting, and that is the, the it's. This lower diameter divided by that's it. You can derive distortion no matter what thickness of plate you have, what diameter of cylinder you have. You no longer need a chart that tells you K factors and all that stuff like that. That's a lot of you may not know what K factors are. We're going to go into that too. 
So, and there's a formula. It's the print lighter, diameter divided by twice the plate minus the back. And, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Now, it says, see, here's your print diameter. And the reason we say two times the plate minus the backing thickness for this is because the plate thickness contributes twice to the diameter. If you wanted to do it once, you could use radius and all that, but I use diameter. Uh, if all that is confusing to you, it's, don't, don't let it bother you. <clears throat> Just understand that uh, distortion is predictable, it's necessary, and it varies with cylinder size and with plate thickness. So if you have a given cylinder size, but your plate thickness is different, well, you know, you're comparing two plate this, the, the thicknesses, distortion values will be different. If you have the same plate thickness on a given press, and you're using a smaller versus a larger cylinder, you're going to have different distortion values based on those diameters. So one distortion value does not apply to all cylinder diameters. <laughs> The alternate method up here is the K factor. Now K is the elongation limit. How much this outer diameter elongated, let's say, to, to, to close that gap. Okay. And that happens to be twice this thickness times pi, which is, uh, uh, you know, which would affect the circumference, and that's the K factor. That's why I don't like to use the K factor because it's, it gets a little confusing. So, but there is this thing called K factor, and if you want to look it up and research it, you can find it. Now, uh, I think that digital plates are a little peculiar because whereas when we're exposing an analog plate, the analog plate is flat. When we're exposing a digital plate on a drum, it's already curved. But it doesn't have the same curvature as the cylinder it would be mounted on. So, the, you know, it still needs to be distorted, but the machine knows what to do and it does that automatically. You don't have to worry about that. You put in some parameters and it does that for you. But if you're working in <clears throat> some types of software, you might need that value so that you can then Put that into your workflow at some point before the film is output because your film will in the direction of the web of the press will have to be a little bit shorter so that when it gets wrapped on the cylinder it grows to the size you want now <clears throat> there are various plate thicknesses some common ones are 1.14 mm 1.70 mm 2.72 mm the first two you're probably going to see the thinner plates. The, the last one uh, has been a uh, you know wide web presses printing on polyfilm. We tend to use thicker plates and that sort of thing. But there are various plate thicknesses. Back plate thickness. The backing thickness also 0.5 mm, 0.55, 0.7, and that's important because it, because since we're talking about only the polymer portion, if your overall plate thickness is, is constant, but you're comparing two different backing thicknesses, you have two different polymer thicknesses. And again, you have different distortion. <clears throat> they all factor into distortion these days, the plate thickness, the backing thickness.